Hello, my techie and non-so-techie friends. My name is Dan Duran. I'm the Chief Technology Officer here at Rhino Cybersecurity. As you can see, I'm working from home. I have a bit of a cold. <coughs> Excuse me. No, it's not COVID. I already got myself checked out. And I don't want to spread the germs out there, but I still want to talk to you about cybersecurity. Today, we're going to talk about a real life phishing zero day attack. This is cybersecurity from the trenches. Don't go anywhere and stay tuned. If you like my content, make sure you subscribe and press on that little bell so you can get notifications as soon as new videos are out. A zero day phishing attack is... Sorry. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Let me begin by defining what a zero-day phishing attack is. A zero-day phishing attack is a new attack that has not been reported by email scam signatures in software. The antivirus signatures have not been updated, the servers still have valid security certificates, the URLs have not been blacklisted by DNS filtering software, and the standard phishing protection is basically useless. A zero-day phishing attack is especially hard to detect even for the trainer if the sender that's sending you the email is pretty legit. So John Doe, my friend, is sending me an email and the email address is John Doe at company.com, which I personally know, and it does not go into my junk mail. It goes right into my inbox and I see it. I might not be able to detect it. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to power up my Outlook in here. And first, I'm going to show you a legitimate email. So Kevin Pham is our DevOps manager at Rhino Cybersecurity. He's sending me or he's sharing a document with me. And this is his email, right? So I can go through the email and see that he's sharing a document, right? If I look at his signature and his email address, there it is, Kevin at Rhino.io, right? Kevin Pham, everything looks pretty legit. Um, I can see, for example, the links for the privacy statement. If I hover over this, I'll be able to see the actual URL for the document. Everything is kosher when it comes to this legitimate email. Now, if I look at the fake one, here's the fake email. So you can see that it doesn't look very good. Uh, it is on the side. Uh, however, the email address and the sender is pretty accurate. So it got to my inbox as opposed to the spam mail. However, this is just an embedded image inside of my Outlook. There is no HTML around it. And if I hover over this image, you will see it says to nyt.fanlick.to, right? So that doesn't look very good to me. So I see that the sender of this email is valid, it's my friend. The email address is correct, that's my friend's email address, but the email in itself looks a little wonky. Now I'm going to click on it. So as you can see, this looks a little wonky and the main reason is because this is made for phones and not so much desktops. I will show you how it looks on my mobile in a bit, but first let's look at the security certificate. So you can see in the security certificate that this is valid, still valid, it's issued by R3. And if I go over, everything looks legit in terms of the security certificate. Now, if there was a wall here, if Google, the search engine actually detected this malware, this is what you would see, right? The site ahead contains malware. You wouldn't even be able to get through. Now, if you have antivirus with domain filtering, then you will see another wall from Webroot, Bitdefender, or any other antivirus software that will do exactly the same thing on your browser. What happens when I click here? Do you see where it says Windows.net? Windows.net is an authentic website. It belongs to Microsoft for their .NET framework. However, the subdomain, the ingress.z16web.core, that is a hacked server. And as you can see, the security certificate for this domain is actually valid. So this is the phishing landing page. 
everything looks a little blurry on the background and again this is made basically for phones more than desktop if i put my credentials in here and i click on next i can see that the site says it's very fine and then invalid credentials. If I keep on putting credentials, I will continue to give hackers different credentials if I forget my credentials, etc. So you have to be careful with that type of stuff. Now, let me power up my mobile to see exactly how it looks inside of a phone. All right, so this is my phone. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to my Outlook app, as you can see here, and I'm going to go into the email, as you can see, and now it's centered, it's not to one side. If I click on the link, I go to this page. You see how the background actually changes now? So this is made for phones as opposed to desktop. Anybody that's using a phone, you should be careful with the link. Look at the link, look at the domain, where it's pointed at, and you'll be able to tell whether this is fake or not. Now, if I click on the preview, this is what I get, and again, this is made for phones, so it looks a little better than desktop, but the URL still looks weird. So here, again, I can enter the credentials, and basically what I'm doing is giving all my information, my username and password, to the hackers. As we can see, even though you have a firewall, you have EDR, you have antivirus, the zero-day attacks still get through Microsoft, they still get through your antivirus software, as well as your firewall, and people can actually get hacked. So guys, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and you comment on the comment box below. Also subscribe and click on that little bell so you can get notifications as soon as a new video is out. Stay safe, stay secure, and I'll see you next time.